Afternoon guys, Dave Canberra at the Pathfinder School back with another video in the 21st Century Long Hunter series. What I wanted to talk to you about today was reloading black powder into a 12 gauge spent casing. Okay. Yesterday we talked about muzzle loading the H&R New England Arms single shot 12 gauge and a lot of people kind of missed the point of that. The point was that it can be used as a muzzle loading implement. Okay, you can also reload shotgun shells in the field and I thought that I would go ahead and show you how to do that in your camp with common tools that you have and then you can reload this with black powder and shoot it like a normal 12 gauge shell. Now the advantage to that is that you can make quite a few of these in camp, put them in your bag and you've got reloaded shells with you. The other advantage to using black powder over modern smokeless powders is it's a lot harder to screw it up. Okay. Modern powders don't take a whole lot of charge to overcharge something and really damage your gun or possibly make it unsafe for you to use as well. So black powder is a little bit harder to mess up. You can get away with 25, 20 extra grains here, 25 extra grains there maybe without blowing up your gun. Whereas, you know, 25 extra grains of a blue dot or a green dot powder could really, really be dangerous. So I want to make sure that you understand that before we shoot this video. The process for this is very similar to what we did yesterday, except we're not going to cut the plastic part of the casing off. We're not going to use any dies or tools or crimping or anything with this. We're just going to use a high brass casing. Uh, this one came from a slug. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So hang tight. Okay, guys, real quick, the tools of the trade for this, you know, to load a shotgun shell are a little bit different than for muzzle loading. You're going to need something that's a little bit longer and deeper. All this is is a screwdriver extension, quarter inch, with one screwdriver bit in it that's got the smallest Phillips head in it. All right. Everything else other than some beeswax and a smaller shot is what I'm going to use in this video. It's exactly the same as what we did yesterday. The process is nearly the same except we're going to load the shell instead of loading down the muzzle. Now, if I'm going to reload shells in the field, I'm going to load them with pretty heavy shot. It's either going to be BB size shot or it's going to be slingshot ammo size shot, almost like buckshot. The reason for that is I want the most versatility I can get out of that loaded shell. I can kill anything from a bird with that shell, especially if it's got BBs in it, all the way up to you know, including medium sized game like large possums, large raccoons, things of that nature. Now, you're going to need that buckshot size load if you're going to try to take down a deer or even ball ammunition, round ball ammunition, which you can buy molds to cast your own round balls from wheel weights. It's not a big deal. I've showed that in videos past. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to set some of this stuff out of the way for a minute and we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. The first thing I'm going to do is knock the primer out. Just like I did yesterday, I'm just going to take this magnet that I have. Again, that's multi-purpose in my kit because I can use it to magnetize a needle with. It doesn't take up hardly any space at all. And I'm going to put it on the bottom of this shell and I'm going to even it up with the primer. Then I'm going to turn that upside down and I'm going to put this, now being a punch instead of a screwdriver bit, straight down on top of the primer. And then I'm going to baton that primer out. And all I need to do is hit that a couple times until it slips and it will get stuck again in my magnet. I'll pull it out. Then I'm going to put a new primer in this case. Okay, so now that I've taken the old primer out, I've got a box of 209 shotgun primers here. I'm going to pull one out of the box. I'm going to push it in by hand as far as I can. Just like that and seat it as best I can. Looks like it's pretty well seated, but if I pull this out, this quarter inch driver will go straight over the top of that primer. Then all I have to do is tap it in place again on a flat surface just to make sure it's well seated. There it is, nice and flush. And now I'm done with this part of it. And I don't need this equipment anymore, but that's a very small amount of equipment to carry in your pack. You know, one extra tool right there with the screwdriver bit in it to reload. 12 gauge shells in the field. Pretty simple stuff. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my powder. Okay, Same as I did yesterday. Same grain weight as I had yesterday. I've got this powder measure set at 100 grains. I'm going to go ahead and fill it up. Make sure that it's good and level. Slide that over to make sure it's level. And I'm going to charge 
my shell. All right, now, generally what you'll have in a shotgun shell is you'll have a shot cup that separates your powder from your from your charge or your for, or your load. What I'm going to use for that purpose is I'm going to use just a piece of wadding here, and it'll just be a piece of this patch that I had yesterday. And it doesn't have to be very big, really. Actually, I'm going to cut this one in half. There we go. And I'm going to fold that up into a square, nest it down inside, take my piece again, and just pack it down tight on top of the powder, just like that. Okay? At that point, I'm ready to add my BBs or my shot or whatever I'm using. Like I said, I like to use BBs. They're easy to get. Most of them are made out of, you know, some kind of coated... They've got coating on them of zinc or their copper, and they won't damage your barrel. I'm going to go ahead and fill this up again to that same height. Got a couple extra ones there. Put them back inside. Save those for later. And then I'm going to dump those into the shell next. Sometimes the BBs get jammed up in there a little bit on you. Not that big a deal. Just rack it around a little bit and they'll come loose. Okay. Now we've got all the BBs in there. We're going to put another wad, okay, which would normally be a piece of cardboard on top of that. And again, we're just going to shove it down on top of there. And seat it real good pack it in tight just like that okay now the only other thing we need to do is we need to seal this round up now I can look at this and I can see that that there's about a quarter of an inch difference there because this thing's not going to be crimped so the crimp is right there I can cut that off if I want to with my knife it's not a big deal and then I can use that after I cut that off it'll just save me the amount of wax I have to put on there so I'm going to trim that down some I'm not going to trim it down a ton, but I'm going to trim it down even with my knife. And you only have to do this once, obviously. And once you've got it to where you've only got, you know, a little over an eighth of an inch there or something like that to seal the top of that, that's what you're going to want. And then you can use that shell over and over again in the future. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal this round with wax. And the way I would do that is if I had a beeswax candle or something I could use that. I could use tallow but tallow is not as good as beeswax is in that tallow will not stay hard in hotter temperatures as good as beeswax will. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to drip some hot beeswax on here to seal this shell. Like I said if I had a candle it would be real easy but I don't have a candle right in front of me. I got a chunk of beeswax from my pack and that's what I'm going to use. Use what you have. And I don't have to run this all the way to the top. I just have to make sure that I got a good seal in here against the plastic. A candle I could just not use my not spend my lighter so much and just go drip drip drip. But with my lighter I'm gonna have to spend a lot of fluid to do this. And I want that to be a good eighth of an inch thick seal. One thing that I'll do with this, you can see that wax is in there. It's still not quite hardened yet. And I'll go ahead and kind of just push it around the sides to make sure I got a good tight seal. Push it down in the middle with my thumb. Make sure I got it packed in there good. Now at this point, you could trim some more off of that shell if you were convinced you know, that was going to be your load all the time. But you never know. Things vary a little bit. You might get a couple extra pellets in there, something like that, and you might need that extra room. So you don't have to cut that off. It's not going to hurt anything for it to be on there. Once that's good and hard, it's ready to be put in a shooting bag. We're going to go test this out on a bird target right now. Okay, guys, we got a little fake bird target made out of that same floor matting material. I stuck it in a tree back here. 
try to get this camera out of the sun for you if I can and you can see him right there I'm gonna set this camera down for a minute so you can see what I'm looking at here zoom in on him a little bit if I can all right there we go We're ready to shoot Okay guys, we've got our single shot 12 gauge here. We've got our round that we made with the wax cap on it. Let's uh, shoot this old bird and see how it goes. All right, got it zoomed in. We step off a few paces here. Okay, there lies our bird here. We'll pick him up and see if you can see him. If not, I'll have to take the camera over there. I'm zoomed in about as far as I can. There we go. Got holes blasted all over him. And, you know, because we reloaded that shell, you know, and we didn't cut the brass off of it, it'll eject just fine. All we gotta do is take that dude back to camp, reload it again. Ready for another shot. Okay, guys, like I said, you know, there's our spent shell. Now all we have to do is take that right back to camp, knock that primer out, put a new one in, reload it, and we're good to go. We could do that with 10 shells, keep them in our pack, and we're ready to rock and roll with 10 shots anytime we want to. Just another way that the 12 gauge is so versatile. You know, the single shot 12 gauge is, to me, the most versatile gun ever made. You can see, you know, with that shot, that we used just then, it devastated that bird. And that was at about, I don't, I'm gonna guess, 15 to 18 yards, maybe. Um, there's probably, I'm guessing 40 holes in that bird. And that was a brand new unshot target. So almost every BB that came out of that gun hit that bird. This is a uh, modified choke, three inch modified choke H&R. You can get these in full choke, you can get them in modified choke. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Second in the series about the 12 gauge on the 21st Century Long Hunter series. My name is Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support, and I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving.